Okay, so some people may be triggered. You may be triggered by this video, and I apologize. I don't, sorry. Sorry, not sorry. You may be triggered in this video. Tom Dumoulin, Chris Froome, who's going to win the Giro? Who's going to win the Tour de France? Now, let's do a recap. We see Big T here. Big T doesn't give a fuck. If he's going to take a Big T dump, he's going to do it with a few million people watching on Eurosport. He doesn't care. When he's got to blow, he's got to go. And he knows how to shake that champagne. He knows how to, look how relaxed he is. He knows how to deal with media spotlight. So that's a big a big, big deal for GC riders, because if you can't handle the pressure being out front, being the alpha, when the media's giving you shit, then you're gonna crack, you're gonna drop all this cortisol, you're gonna have all the stress hormones, and you're not gonna be as good. Here we have Chris Froome, he knows how to deal with reporters, he's got that experience, he's won the Tour de France many, many times, he'll win it many more times again. Chris Froome can win any fucking race he wants. That's how good he is. And we've got Big T here on his TCR, this is Tuna Nunda, got Cadell, Richie Port, Big T. Now, Big T's a big lad, and he's mixing up with Cadell and Richie, who are going full fucking gas. It looks like Possevivo there, and Big T's a big guy. He's, he's as big as Kittle is, man. I've ridden with Big T and Kittle here in Adelaide, and uh, Big T knows how to cut the fuck up. He's drinking his sugar drink there, and he's quite an approachable guy. That's another good characteristic of a GC rider. He can keep his cool, in my experience, pretty well. Now, we don't really know what goes on behind the scenes in terms of temper, but in my experience, dealing with people... Big T has got that very cool, calm, GC mindset, even before he was a big dog, even before he was a superstar. Uh, he was he's quite down to earth when I've met him in Adelaide, been with him a few times. It was like Gessink behind there, Gessink in the hurt box, look at Big T, he's still hurting, but he's just composed, his shoulders are relaxed, he's breathing through his diaphragm, he's got his jersey open, and look how relaxed he looks here, he's got Nabali, is that Quintana? It looks like Quintana, the little Colombian elf, and Big T rolling across the line, rolls him, rolls him across the line up top of the GC climb. So he's a big guy, he's a big unit, and that's why we call him the Big T. Look how he's, he's got a lot of girth on his, on his waist and stuff. He's not actually a small guy. Like, look at the Nabali there on the left. You can sort of see that. Um, that yeah, Big T is a big lad, so he's just killing. He's like an Indorain. He's like the Indorain of Netherlands. And he's got that TCR. He's not riding the disc bike, he's riding the, uh, the normal bike, which is what we'll see pretty much for all the GC riders, ride the normal bike, fast wheel changes, less weight, etc. The pros don't really need disc brakes because they're just so fucking good on the Daniels anyway. And look at look how relaxed he is here in the Velta. And Chavez is in the red jersey on the limit. Quintana's about to fucking hemorrhage a peanut. And Big T's just like, yep, yeah, come on, bro. Let's get the Strava segment. Let's get it going. He's got his mouth closed after the thing. He's, you know, he's very well hydrated. And he just looks quite composed here despite, you know, obviously smashing out a lot of watts that day and burning a lot of calories. He's still really composed. His eyes look pretty relaxed. Like he could do more. And this is a picture of Big T when he was 16. He's carving the fuck up on some vegan pasta, just straight up pasta. Apparently he likes pasta and ketchup, and he doesn't mind a bit of a Sprite either. But uh, so that's it. You've got to be able to carve the fuck up to be a GC rider, and you have to be able to TT. So here we have him on a giant, he's on a giant Trinity, and he's uh, in his TT pose. He looks, he looks very comfortable, doesn't he? He looks very comfortable in the bike. He's just, he's just born to fucking ride, you know? And you see him, he's just very, very smooth rider. Unlike Chris Froome, who is a faster rider who's won more races, Chris Froome on the bike, he does look like an amateur, but he bangs out the watts per kilo like nobody else. Chris Froome would kill Lance Armstrong today. If Lance was 1999 Lance was here, Chris Froome would smoke. So Chris Froome, he definitely has the crazy physiology. He has the, on the bike, he just doesn't look like a pro rider, but he just, he just crushes it, man, when he wants to. And he, he sees his fluctuation from the noob days to where he is at now. He knows how to uh, do what it takes to keep his weight uh, optimum for watts per kilo when it matters, when it matters. Remember, the riders do fluctuate over the year, so you don't need to be lean all year long. And this is a commissaire. He disagreed with the commissaire's opinion about his uh, shoe covers and says he just knocked the fuck out of that commissaire, knocked him off the, you know, he gave him a power bar ramming with that front wheel. What bike is that? Is that a, uh, looks like a look. And he, again, Chris Froome, like, he's a do-whatever-it-takes sort of guy. He's, he's like Lance. He's like, do whatever the fuck it takes. If your bike's broken, don't sit there crying like a whinging bitch. Get up and motherfucking run like Forrest Gump up that climb, just getting it done. That was his classic. That was an example of make it fucking happen. Do whatever it fucking takes to get it fucking done. I'm not sure why we're just crashing, but this is how dangerous cycling is. This is fucking crazy. You can be doing all your training, all your everything, and have a crash and just fuck your knee things like that. I would recommend ice personally. I'd recommend heat therapy because ice is just going to restrict blood flow. We want to allow blood flow to the injury site. That's just, that's another video. You know, he's, he Chris Froome crashes, he gets back up, keeps going again. You know, can you imagine that? Banging out 450 watts on the climb, go down downhill, crash, and then go and sit, go to sit on 500 watts on the back of your teammates to try and catch up. 
It's, it's insane what I have to do. It's insane what I have to do. Uh, this is a giant TCR. This is Big T's TCR Advanced SL. It's the latest edition. Uh, the new Durace group set. It's like a Pioneer power meet on there. Will Big T beat Chris in, in the Tour de France? I don't think he will. I don't think he will because Chris Froome's is so good. But Big T is definitely, the, I would say he's the second best rider at the moment. He just looks so calm and he just, he looks so healthy in the eyes and his face and his hair. He's just, he's just doing it so easy. So I would say that uh, Big T is the biggest threat, but I would say Chris Froome, you know, has got this in the bag again. Because Chris Froome is just untouchable. Let's be honest with that. Let's be honest with that. But we'd be, be between Big, it'll be like Chris Froome first, Big T second. That's doing our predictions. December, Tour de France in July. Let's find out who was right. Gone too far, it's time to wipe the fake blood off that platinum plate.